doing these investigations for, for litigation for, for a number of years and realized that it really is about the process uh, of how we do it. And so in reading the book, Play Bigger, about category design, um, I realized, hey, wait a second, we've, we, have been, we had already created a new category. Mm -hmm. And that is not about the technology, but about uh, the process and the analysis. A camera's just a camera, but um, having that process is, is, um, is, is, more, is more about the product than just the, the technology. So you are you have the largest private investigation firm in New Jersey but you've done something more than that. And that is, you are getting into, what's the name of the category? How do you define it? Uh, Intel surveillance. Intel surveillance. And what is the nature of the Intel surveillance? In other words, what are the folks, what is it that you're trying to help folks fix, accomplish, or avoid? Well, um, Chuck, I've been a, a, an investigator or detective for 35 years, and I've had creative solutions for uh, 11 years. and. Um, coming, starting the business with a background as a, as a private investigator and 20 years in law enforcement, um, I began the business and specialized in surveillance. And so surveillance is something that is always been there. It's never going to go away. And that is sitting, having a person sit and wait and uh, document with photo or video once the activity occurs that uh, they're looking for. So obviously there's a lot of downtime waiting for the uh, activity to take place. So uh, very early on, I said, well, there must be a way to uh, put out a camera in lieu of having a person um, sit. And so mm -hmm. when I started Creative Solutions, I realized there were very few, um, almost, uh, almost no cameras on the market that really met the needs for the private mm -hmm. investigator. So I uh, found a trail camera, deer, cam deer, uh, deer camera that hunters use. Um, figured out the settings, and then concealed them in handmade enclosures that I made and mm -hmm. uh, came up with a system, a process of how to covertly um, hide the cameras, how to deploy them, um, and then more importantly, how to review the data. Because mm -hmm. since you don't have somebody sitting there, you don't know when the activity took place, if any. So uh, I came up with a, a method of reviewing the footage and uh, having settings, and that included in-house Intel analysts um, eventually outsourced that data review and uh, for the preliminary data review and then used our in-house analysts to, um, to find uh, the evidence pertinent or, or activity pertinent to the investigation. Mm -hmm. And um, knowing that the camera I was using, which wasn't made for this purpose, we needed to find something, and I decided to create my own. Um, said, oh, okay, all right, this camera's pretty simple. It can't be that difficult to make a simple camera. And um, so uh, after several different uh, tries, I ended up uh, finding a, an, an expert um, full stack engineer to design the camera. That was two and a half years ago. And um, set about uh, creating the camera and uh, ended up uh, having some issues getting the embedded Linux working within the camera mm -hmm. and uh, ended up partnering with a large um, product development engineering company, U.S.-based, uh, Cardinal Peak, to uh, work on the, the project. Mm -hmm. And um, as working with such a great design company, ended up becoming more of a, a platform. We were designing software in addition to getting the camera working. I said, wow, what can we do this? Can we have it do analytics, machine learning analytics? And they said, yeah, we can do that, we can do that. So the scope really... Um, increased in terms of the project and um, and in the process at the same time um, we have we uh, had been doing um, um, doing these investigations for, for litigation for, for a number of years and realized that it really is about the process uh, of how we do it and so in reading the book play bigger about category design um, I realized, hey, wait a second, we, we, have been, we had already created a new category. Mm -hmm. And that is not about the technology, but about uh, the process and the analysis. A camera's just a camera, but um, having that process is, is, um, is, is, more, is more about the product than just the, the technology. Yeah, ultimately with, with category design, it's, it's, not about, it's, it's not just about the widget. Right. It's there's what is it that you're trying to fix, accomplish or avoid? What is their issue and how are you creating a new and different future? OK, for somebody, I'm my brain immediately goes to 
one of my favorite movies. You, you all can think negatively. It's fine. Brewster's Millions, right? And in Brewster's Millions, there was a private eye that was hired to find the Richard Pryor character, and he had that classic suit with the hat, and he's carrying around a camera. And he's, follow, he's trailing him, you know, tailing him in a car, and he's taking pictures. Now, all that downtime, all those hours are extremely expensive hours. Uh, when you're accomplishing zero, the, the rate is, you know, the hourly rate is the hourly rate, but essentially your, your cost is, is infinite because your productive output is zero. And so that is very, very costly. So that is the real world. Fast forward, I'm also a hunter. And I will okay. tell you that I've got six remote cameras out there right now, and I love them every single day. But mm -hmm. if I need to do remote surveillance and I'm a ne'er-do-well, and I know I'm a ne'er-do-well, I'm going to see a camera and I'm going to scurry away from it. I'm going to stay where, you know, where there's no light, where I'm in the shadows. And so that causes a problem. And so as you described what it is you were trying to do, you were describing it from the lens of your, uh, your super consumers, which would be people just like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Other investigators uh, that would be having to be able to do this in a cost-effective way. But as you start to say, there's a lot more to this problem. It's not about the camera. It's mm -hmm. about Intel surveillance. It's about the output in a way that becomes more affordable and allows you to do mass surveillance at a far faster pace and a far more affordable price scale. Right. And, and in so doing, you're far more effective. And that's really the lens by which you're looking at this. But the cool part is, is I want to hear more about, I want to hear more about the journey because you very quickly went into Linux operating systems and software and electronics design, and it parallels a journey for a number one of a friend and client of mine who has remote surveillance of their own. It's called Chirp Sounds, and it's about picking up bird sounds from your backyard and bringing it into your house, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's remote surveillance of, of in a sense, exact same parallel journey. Is he went from being a, a salesperson and a birder to someone who creates a product, electronic product, and essentially knows nothing about it, right? Right. And that sounds like Dan's story. So tell me about this journey. Well, it it, it began with saying, okay, well, there, there's nothing on the market. I'm very hands-on. So when it came mm -hmm. to the entire process, I've done every component to figure out how to develop the process. So uh, back when I started, uh, around when I started the company, I was deploying cameras in the middle of the night, uh, running the business, working investigations, doing sales. So I was working 120 hours a week driving in the middle of the night around the state, fall asleep on the side of the road, get up. Um, and Sounds like an entrepreneur journey. <laughs> so it, it gave me the, uh, the knowledge that uh, I've done it. Uh, when it came to reviewing the footage, I did it. Um, then I could figure out how to create it. And so as a part of that in creating the camera, I knew what I wanted. Uh, and that was where Doug came in, my full stack engineer, where uh, I, it was such a great um, journey and uh, opportunity to find uh, find somebody who says yeah I can do that and then every call we had every week and this started in 19 in 2021 every call we would have was, was an education for me it was like I was I was going to school and I'd say well can we do this or what about this or explain this and and I would record each meeting and I would listen to it or watch it uh, oftentimes twice so it became my education in, in full stack engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical, uh, some software. And, and then that helped me to create our first, first generation uh, prototype of the camera. You know, it has our, our name on it, our custom circuitry. And, um, and so as a, then now that I have 15 experts and engineers working on the camera, um, numerous software engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, our lens designer won an Academy Award. Michael Kiesling won an Academy Award for his lens design for uh, Spielberg movies, Saving Private Ryan, the Bourne movies. So it's it's been um, you know such a great learning experience. I just wish I had more time to invest in the learning and not have to run the business to pay for it all. <laughs> Don't we all? Well, and it's funny how you get into this you get into this business as an entrepreneur. Uh, essentially, you're an investigator, and the next thing you know, you're this product designer, which is not in your resume, but. <laughs> When you follow the trail that is to fill a void, to create a, a, a new value proposition where one had never existed before, that oftentimes takes us in crazy directions. And But it takes an awful lot of passion. Well, why would you undertake this? I mean, most people just say, I'm not doing that. I don't know anything about it. Why would you do this, Dan? I, I started doing it, and I'm just not very good at quitting. 
so I just have been, I made a decision and then it kept growing and I came up with ideas and, uh, you know, spending money, borrowing money. And now I'm all in and every other second I'm, I keep checking my sanity. And then on the alternate seconds, I say to myself, oh, this is going to be big. This is going to be worth it. So it, it's a very, um, I feel I'm very torn about uh, whether this is uh, the right path or, um, or, uh, or a big mistake. And, and we're not there yet to say it was the right path. Well, and that's both the entrepreneur's journey and the category designer's journey. You, it, it takes a long time to get to the point where you say, I have something that's very, very, very unique. The electronic vehicle, the electric vehicle, is the most iconic example of category design. Mm -hmm. right? it, it didn't exist before. And someone had to go out and create the concept and create demand for it so that there was enthusiasm enough to be able to build the product, build the market, and create a market. And this is very much the same exact journey, but that does not happen overnight, particularly when your, your brainstorm is only a brain of one. And as I often say, a brainstorm of one is more like a drizzle. <laughs> so it takes a long, 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 long time to irrigate the field. And, and, but you, you do get there. The beautiful, the beautiful part is, is you are in the shoes of your ideal customer profile. You are the, the prospective loyal fan and you understand it better than anyone else. So you literally have your built-in customer research and you come in from that direction, which is really how the journey always begins. And you're not kidding anybody. I don't think your passion is just because you don't want to quit. I think it's because you believe in the value proposition deeply mm -hmm. because you lived it. Falling asleep on the side of the road, that shit gets old, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you bring up a good point, Chuck, which is having an idea, having a passion, and and what's been really phenomenal is, is my, my full stack engineer, Doug, and working with Cardinal Peak, they know that um, there are 120 engineers, US-based engineers. And they know that this is coming out of, out of my pocket, out of our revenue. And so they're really um, aware of that and working very hard to help create this product. And the, uh, they have a lot of faith that it's going to work and it's going to, to continue into future generations. And so finding a partner like them that, that does believe in it both gives you confidence to know you're on the right path. Uh, and then, of course, a, a great partner. Uh, to pursue so let me just sometimes I just have to really pinch myself say wow I, this is th these guys really understand this crazy thing I have in my head and they're making it happen and it's uh, it's really kind of kind of mind-blowing so that's I kind of want to put that out there to people that if they do have an idea certainly you have to invest uh, the money and you have to invest the time but they're, they're, th these people aren't just looking to make money they really are investing in in the future of the project uh, as much as they are um, you know looking at it as just a, a customer relationship well, because honestly, in the end of our career, it's the stories we have to tell. They're, you know, that from which we get the greatest satisfaction. Yeah, sure, there's money to be made, no doubt about it. But don't get me started on some of the things that I've accomplished in the past, you know, from putting product on Navy ships, to, oh God, don't get me started on Navy radar, I love that stuff, <laughs> to a custom e-commerce system that I built, yet I'm not a coder. Just like you, I built the system, I was the system architect, the entire thing was constructed out of my brain, but I enlisted help. And we were able to realize an amazing product that was nothing like anyone else had ever done before. Mm -hmm. in, in that industry, we created a category. You did the same thing. People, I don't know anything about electronics. I don't know anything about cameras. I can't make this happen. But if you have the category idea in your head, if you're able to find your way to get the resources to partner with them, you can realize a great product. You've done it. I've done it. Two very different things. But it's the same, it's the same development process, if you will. Mm -hmm. And you end up being the architect. And if you can dream it, you can be the architect. So, and that your, your, your partner, they want a feather in their cap. And they don't want some raggedy old broken ass feather. They want a big, beautiful plume that they can you know, sing from the rooftops and say, yes, this was a great story. This was a great success story, both in how we executed and hopefully beyond the execution to how they helped Dan succeed and Dan's company succeed. So mm -hmm. it's easy to find somebody to believe in it if they you know, can see the value proposition in the hole that you're filling. And that's usually the way with category design. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but it's far more than a camera. If it were just a camera, then I'd have one, you'd have one, some other guy who does know about cameras would make the camera and that would be it, okay? Mm -hmm. But at ultimately, at some point, it's not just about the hardware, it's about how do you make it happen cost effectively? And you said AI, and you said all kinds of things. Tell me a little bit more about it, because I, I have some other thoughts on that, but tell me some more. Oh, certainly. Well, the, the reason why this camera will be so unique, um, in addition to the system, is that you're dealing with collecting evidence. So it, it, the camera is essentially a cross between a 
trail camera and uh, an IP type security camera. So mm -hmm. if you look at a trail camera, it is battery powered and um, and remote and um, sometimes has, has LTE cellular, sometimes yes. doesn't. Mm -hmm. And and then with your security cameras, they are powered um, constantly. They are um, sending the footage over uh, an ethernet. So you've got a big pipeline of data and you've got a big pipeline of power. And so a trail camera is great, but it's not covert, like you said, and it is not um, going to capture everything. It has a, what they call a peer motion sensor, uh, passive infrared, that measures heat and movement and triggers the camera to turn on. But for evidence purposes, for investigations, you want the camera to be running constantly, like a security camera. So to find a balance between those two things um, doesn't really exist. So that's one of the two silos of the product that we're creating. The other silo is you want the best, highest resolution at the lowest, um, uh, the, uh, and dealing with the storage issues and the processing. So you can have a great high megapixel sensor. Our camera has a 16 megapixel sensor, and you can, uh, but then that's going to create big file sizes. So now you're dealing with compression, and they're going to collect a lot of footage that's not pertinent to your investigation. So you've got to balance that, um, those features of the file size and the resolution along with the processing of the camera and the battery uh, mm -hmm. expenditure. So those are the things we have to balance. So that's the uniqueness of the hardware uh, in addition to the covert uh, nature of it and the integrated enclosures to blend into the environment mm -hmm. um, to, to deploy the camera. Now in terms of the, the category, what, what happened was we've done over 4,000 unmanned surveillance deployments over the past eight years. And um, many of the cases that we've had a great deal of success with are for family law attorneys uh, here in New Jersey who are looking to, uh, for their clients, to document uh, cohabitation. Cohabitation is within one person is receiving alimony, but they're in violation of their marital settlement agreement, and they are living as husband and wife with a, another uh, person. So you get it, man. <laughs> so to <Sorry>. document that. <laughs> Happily married guy, that ticks me off. <laughs> so to, um, to prove that they are cohabitating, it, it takes a long-term surveillance. So our, uh, our unmanned surveillance uh, methods were perfect for that. Then, um, then we took the, the footage and, and analyzed it and, and put it into a really comprehensive report. And, but in, in the process, we were analyzing the data, comparing it with social media, with background investigation, identifying the people, telling a story. So our reports are 200, 300, 400 pages telling a story of, uh, what the, um, of what's taking place. And um, as a result of our methods, we've had um, a couple of cases we're really proud of uh, as a company that became case law. So there was oh, a temple case. Thank you, thank you. Where our evidence was was the basis for the judges to determine whether or not uh, the judge's decision to proceed with the motion was uh, uh, was the correct decision. So it wasn't about our technology; it was that our facts from our technology were used as the indisputable facts. So there was the the Temple case, and then uh, a few weeks ago uh, was the uh, Cardali decision, which was through the uh, New Jersey Supreme Court. Um, so, like to give you an example, oh, this show. is. Yeah, this that's, is, that's uh, the Super Bowl of case law, right? <laughs> right. Or, or right. certainly well, division, mm -hmm. certainly division championship. Right, right. So, so then you know when when I looked at that and I read the book uh, and started to look at category, category design, I said, well, those investigations are all intel surveillances. It's about the the footage. It's about the analysis. It's about an investigator. It's about a report that is um, that can be held up in court, authenticate the evidence. And I said, wow, that's that's what this is. So that was when kind of the light bulb went off. And I said, this is the future of investigations. It's not about a camera because anybody right. can put a camera up and say, here's mm -hmm. the footage. It's about the analysis and the process. Um, how is it done? How are the camera settings? Who's going to testify? Uh, and to um, to kind of validate and to kind of get out there within the industry and to build the category, I created a, a white paper that I'm uh, finishing up. I started um, uh, almost two years ago writing that, and uh, I sent you a copy. Um, and it's and it's very comprehensive. I went over it today, and <laughs> you know, in prep for this, it 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 covers it, man. <laughs> Thanks. So it, um, you know, I felt it was important in creating the category because in people's minds they say, well, it's really as simple as putting a camera in a tree, and that's really not really the, the case. It's, there's a lot more to it, but other people can, can do it, um, and if they follow the, the proper kind of guidelines and, and considerations, then the, the practice of it will, will grow significantly. But the barriers to entry are very, very high, and as we both have said, it's not just a camera. If I back up on this just a little bit, you can put a camera in a tree, right? 
We go back to the private eye in Brewster's millions. He spends all those hours, okay, paid hours, waiting for nothing to happen. Mm-hmm. All right. We can put a camera in a tree, and then we say, okay, that replaces the private eye. But it doesn't because now we're talking about video, and while you can put in a lower price resource, you still have to have somebody to sit there hour after hour after hour after hour and peruse all of that video surveillance. So your progression is now I've gone from on-site private investigator with a camera to a, a covert video to a lower priced resource. Industrial engineer in me is geeking out on this hard. <laughs> but still you have this extraordinarily uh, large sum of hours that need to be fully monitored. Mm-hmm. And here's where it gets good, right? Why the barriers to entry are so high and what really contributes to your category is how are you now taking the next step to reduce that? The number of hours where somebody has to sit and monitor all that footage. Right. So uh, we were able to increase our, our profits um, or cut our costs by 80% of, um, with our, our outsourcing analysts, but it still was human. So, Again, you're still, now you've just decreased the labor cost just a little more. Mm-hmm. Okay. You went from onshore, your team, to you know, potentially offshore or some lower cost resource. So again, you made incremental progress, but that's not revolutionary. Right. 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 Here comes the revolution. <laughs> So uh, with the, the software that uh, Cardinal Peak is, is creating, um, there's going to be, uh, we have a, a proprietary method of, of uh, transmitting and storing the footage, and then we have um, software for machine learning to filter out unwanted um, footage that isn't pertinent to the investigation, and um, so that then very quickly you can see what um, what's pertinent to your case through machine learning and uh, and a- AI, mm-hmm. uh, and and that becomes the infrastructure that turns a simple camera or a trail cam okay, into something that's highly valuable and extraordinarily unique. Again, back to the most iconic example, the electric vehicle. Electric vehicle's fine, but what makes it truly unique is the infrastructure and the charging stations and the ability to create a journey from where you start to where what your destination is that is acceptable and even enjoyable okay. with navigation system and handheld and, and you know highly crafted instructions and user experience with charging capabilities along the way. That entire system, that systems thinking, enables a better experience by design. It enables a better output by design. And when you get into machine learning and you get into AI and you can reduce the costs and provide this great user experience in essentially a shorter amount of time, then you have the complete package. And that's what I, that's what I just love about it. That's why I was attracted to uh, the solution from our conversation because mm-hmm. it's, the entire, it's the entire system holistically that's really the joy. Right, and, and there's always gonna be a human component. Um, of course. Right, and so having specialized um, uh, Intel surveillance uh, analysts and, and managers um, that's, that specialize in this, know what to look for, know how to summarize and report something for that's going to be 100% or 99% accurate um, is, is a really important uh, component of the whole process. Well, and it's one thing to have an infrared sensor that says, okay, record now because there was movement. It's another thing to then get it to the point where it's properly formatted, admissible in court, believable, beyond a reasonable doubt, although your example was civil, so that doesn't apply, but I mean, in theory, the whole thing could be used for criminal as well, for fraud cases and that sort of thing. And so, and then able to not only impress the attorney, but also to impress the judge or even the justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court, that goes far beyond simple triggering triggering of motion, hence the human component, right? There's an extraordinary level of expertise involved that, again, you're probably not gonna get just by outsourcing somebody to look at some video. Right. It's far more than that, it's a very holistic solution. Um, yeah. Hence, a unique, a unique category. It's not just the damn camera, <laughs> not by a lot. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the what's the you know, what does the future look like, and how has the response been to the solution that you've been doing so far? Uh, the, the demand has been really tremendous over the past few years because we, we already have a, a fully established, uh, you know, we're the largest investigative firm in New Jersey. Uh, we do j- just under $2 million a year in, in revenue. And uh, our unmanned surveillance, our intel surveillance is uh, an integral part of our, our business and our revenue. And um, there has been a, a lot of demand and requests um, outside uh, within our region, outside our region, and we try and really be careful with our growth um, mm-hmm. because so, yeah, we don't want to um, get to the point where we're not able to provide the service to the level that we want to. 
but um, once the, the new platform is together, which should be um, the end of this year or January, um, it, it's, um, the demand already is, um, is really significant um, for our different markets. And so some will be a little bit uh, slower of a ramp up, but some I think will be extremely rapid. And, and, uh, and we just have to be careful uh, of, of being able to manage um, you know, a much greater workflow. Fortunately, because of our infrastructure now, we, we can kind of flick the switch and, and handle uh, a significant uh, amount of, of uh, deployments because we already have the infrastructure in place, just shifting mm -hmm. things slightly. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the reason for looking at it from a systems per point of view, making sure that you can do it in the least amount of time possible. One, you delight your customers in delivering the results more quickly because you have less human resource, and that, that uh, semi-autonomous offloading of the mundane processing, if you will. But then the other thing is that history is absolutely littered with companies who dreamt of hyper, hyper growth <laughs> and failed. Mm -hmm. And so recognizing that alone, that you need to be able to scale organically so as not to fail not to certainly not to fail your customers let alone your family and your sh your you know yourself and your stakeholders mm -hmm. and that's that's a that's a huge insight that i i literally can name names of hyper growth companies used to work for one lucent technologies they're not even around anymore mm -hmm. so and there are more that i can name but i won't so it, that is a, that's a huge realization but it certainly has the potential for it and so i mean what do you envision the long term future to be for your company well you know you know chuck you bring up a good point and and i'm kind of um, a little bit unique in that I, I worked as a, as a private investigator starting in 1988 to 1992, went into government and law enforcement for 20 years, and um, had a, a comfortable, um, secure government job. Mm -hmm. And then uh, ended up um, retiring early to, to start the business. And, the, um, and I think people sometimes think um, you're doing it for a particular reason. I did. I started a business because I, I had to. I, I, it was something that I, 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 I would never be happy if I hadn't pursued you know, starting a business. And I wanted to build uh, the biggest uh, investigative firm in the state. Uh, so I, I had that goal and that objective when I started out. And with this, this project and this platform, it's really not financially motivated. It's kind of the same drive. And, and maybe you experienced the same thing with your products about it's... It's the, um, I have to make this, I have to see this through, um, whatever it takes to, to do it. And so for, since we are making something that's really unique, I want it to be perfect. Um, mm -hmm. Right now we're focusing on functional, but that's why my relationship with Cardinal Peak, where they know I, I'm gonna really, I want it to be really good and then eventually just mind-blowingly great. Uh, and that's my drive. And so I feel that if I do it um, this way, then you know the the growth and the money will come, um, but that's not my my driver focus. It's about getting it to the point where I know it will be um, successful. So hopefully down the road I'll have uh, some more money and more uh, free time. Isn't that what we all want? Right, and then that'll allow you to get it. You know, go up that curve to make it closer to perfect. Right. I think perfect is asymptotic. You never quite get there, but it's a, it's one hell of a goal. And you know the finances. You know the money's amazing, but the money's a double edged sword. Okay. But, this, but again, at the end of the career, the success stories, and all along the journey, it's the stories that you tell that give you this amazing satisfaction. And, and we do know that those success stories are never a double-edged sword, <laughs> never. <laughs> and that's what really derives, that gives us the greatest satisfaction. You know, because you can lose all the money tomorrow, but the success stories never go away. And, and, and that's, that's what motivates me to get up every day and do, do that great job. And um, hopefully make the living for our private corporation uh, for which my wife is the CEO and I'm simply the vice president because <laughs> I want to stay married. <laughs> uh, but so it has to be about the finance that provided for the family. But ultimately, that's that that satisfaction for doing the very best thing and even creating something new. I mean, it's we don't want to brag, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have stories that are that can impress. Mm -hmm. uh, and we take that. We, we, we just it just makes our hearts sing. It truly does. And so I, I think it's not that as you said, you, it's not that you just don't want to quit. I believe in my heart that you feel all this, you know all this intuitively, and uh, I'm sure that's what drives you because you continue to believe in the value proposition. Financially, we know from the study that we learned from category pirates that approximately 74% of the category designers also happen to, or I'm sorry, the category designers also happen to reap approximately 74% of the financial benefit. Okay, so even if someone does come along and copy, 
you still have a disproportionate opportunity to collect the financial record rewards and do wonderful things for your company, your employees, yourself, and your family. So, and isn't that what it's all about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, is taking care of people. So, right. Well, that's cool. Is there anything else you'd like to share with everyone about your journey, about anything? No, no. I mean, I think if 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 anything that I can help uh, inspire people. I mean, right now we're at a point where. Um, it hasn't been proven. It's not a done product yet. And I look forward to uh, hopefully coming back and talking to you about uh, how it came together and uh, the bumps in the road and, and hopefully the, the successes that we have and what the what the demand is. But it's uh, hopefully it will um, after they see the second uh, uh, installment <laughs> will be inspired <laughs> to to take chances uh, with their time and their money. And if they have the opportunity, uh, I can't say yet that it's that everyone should do it. Uh, but hopefully in, in six months or so, I can say that. Well, you know, you're welcome back. You have my calendar. You put it on the calendar and we are going to do it again. I look forward to seeing more. And I'm inspired every time that I do this. Having executed category design, true category design and succeeded from it. It's like a it's like a, a bug that you catch and you can't shake it. And so every time I hear about someone's success through differentiation and that ultimate uh, creating a new category, uh, I just it, it inspires me to keep striving, keep striving, because if it were easy, everyone would do it. Hmm. So it's like a constant journey of, of, you know, searching and searching and working and working and crafting and creating to so kind of find that shining star that is truly unique. And I hope that everyone is inspired so that they can go out and find that search for themselves. Yeah. So thank you so much. Anybody that wants to inspire people, Dan, they're like my new best friends. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. I'm so grateful. And until next time, my friend, take care. For all you out there, dream big. Thank you, Chuck.